So um, in uh, the previous video, we just talked about, well, I'm not sure what order you watch these in. It's not necessarily in an order, but uh, the video I intended for you to watch first was the HSL video where we uh, edited this car photo, uh, the blue Cadillac. Um, and the video, uh, this video is the second in the series of three in Lightroom Classic 2 video tutorial. This one is going to be about the split toning panel, split toning, so something different. So we're going to work on uh, this photo for this process, this photo. So um, here's the deal with this photo. Lots of things technically wrong with this photo. Before I get into fixing it, I want to show you a little something first. And, and to do that, I'm going to exaggerate a couple things. So I'm going to take my exposure and turn it up and pull my blacks way down. Here's why I wanna show you this. If you're ever working on a photo and then all of a sudden you start to see this and the, or this, you've got these blue areas and these red areas and you're like, I don't know what's going on. They're in my photo. I don't know what happened. I will tell you what happened. Here's what happened. These are warnings. They're not actually part of your photo. It's Lightroom saying, Something's going on here that's technically wrong. So let's start with uh, the, the blues, well, the reds. The reds are areas of the photo that are pure white, and they correspond to the histogram over here on the right-hand side. So anything that's in the image that is pure white, which means it has no details. So the way you show this is in the histogram, if you click on this triangle, and the triangle will be white when there are um, in, on the right hand side, there'll be, it'll be a white triangle when the uh, photo is too bright. So if I'm back here, see the triangle's not white. Uh, but back here, the triangle is white. Okay. Uh, you can just see it by just putting your mouse over it to get a sense of what's going on. In this case, uh, if I put it over the blue side, uh, I mean, the, the darker side, uh, this will show me areas that are no detail in the dark. So if I click on it, it'll stay no matter where I move my mouse. So if you're seeing it all the time, those if you're seeing red or blue, and you know it's not in your photo, it just means you clicked on these little highlight and shadow warnings and uh, just click it again to turn it off. All right, let's back to our regularly scheduled photo here and talk about what I do first anytime I see a photo like this, okay? Um, it's nice to have some go-to things to, tr you know, I'm gonna try these things and see if they fix what I think they'll fix. Anytime I have a photo like this where I've got the sky and it's pretty bright, and then I've got something else in the photo that's relatively dark. And, and, and another way to, if you want a technical way to look at this, look at the histogram. The histogram is pushed to both edges of the bright and the dark. So up here on the histogram, I've got lots of stuff in the brights, lots of stuff in the darks. Here's my first move for both of those. I skip everything near the top and go to highlight shadows, whites, and blacks. And I take my highlights and go to minus 100-ish and my whites and go to minus 100-ish. And what that does is the, the clouds, the sky is better. I can see some blue sky now. And then the next thing I do is I take my shadows and go about to plus 100. So now look at the histogram. Instead of being at the edges, the edges are smoothed out and it's brought into the middle. So this is more technically correct. I'm, I've preserved the detail in my bright parts of my photo and I've opened and preserved the details in the darker part of the photo. In doing this, here's what happens. I know this is kind of turning into a tutorial on a, this type of photo, but hang on, we'll get to the split toning in a second. Um, when you do this, what happens is you lose some contrast. So I'm going to turn the contrast back up until it looks good. I'm at about 35. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, white balance and tint. I'm okay on those. I'm going to, uh, maybe I'll just do a little extra blue to get that sky to pop up and uh, maybe go, well, I'm going to leave the tint alone for now. Okay. So a little blue for the sky. Uh, texture. I'm gonna turn that up because I almost always do. That'll be nice on the shingles. It'll bring out the detail in that. I'll turn the clarity up. Uh, remember, D haze is your friend with clouds. Look at those clouds. But also, I'm gonna show you how to fix those little spots in the sky in another video in Lightroom 3. Um, 
So I'll turn the dehaze up a little bit. Let's go ahead and turn up the vibrance because, you know, that's what I do. I'll go to about 30. That'll also richen the color of the sky. Richen. Make the color of the sky more rich. And saturation, I'll just pull that down just a little bit. All right. So I've got my color, my photo um, to a place where, uh, okay, now it's uh, I can start experimenting with some extra layers of... Uh, either creative or corrective control. And I'm gonna use this, the next thing I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna use it creatively. At the end of this video, we're gonna work on the third photo, photo that uh, Tower Bridge photo from London, and we'll kind of combine HSL and split toning as a, as a, a little bit more corrective than just creative. Well, it'll also be creative. Anyway, we'll get there. All right, so this photo, so on this photo, I wanna skip, um, here's HSL. We worked on that earlier. I'm going to skip down to split toning. In split toning, uh, I'm going to show the details of that by clicking the triangle to show the two sections of split toning. And those two sections are highlights and shadows. What this um, panel does is um, it's a lot like the filters in some of the apps on your phone. So it can do like here, look, make it look like a 1970s photo. And that's kind of what we're going to do on this photo. We're going to change it around. Uh, you can go for different looks and different feels. And it can be very special effect looking. It can also be more subtle. So like the be in subtle. So let's, let's talk through how this works. Here's how split toning works. So the highlights part, what that does is it takes a color that you decide you define, and it lays it on top of the brighter portions of the image. So in this image, it would be uh, the shingles on the roof are bright, uh, some of the trim on the building is bright, and obviously the sky and the clouds are bright. So you can lay a color on top of that and decide how rich that color is. So you have the hue, which is the color, and then the saturation, the volume, the intensity of that color. So let's see how it works. Uh, we do the same thing with shadows, the darker parts of the image, where we uh, can lay a color on top of the dark parts, which would be the side of the barn, mostly in this, and a little bit of some of the stuff in the shingles. So, um, if you just drag the hue slider first, nothing changes on either the highlights or the shadows. Because there's, it, there's, there's nothing turned on. And the, the saturation is the volume, basically, and the default is the saturation's at zero. So I'm going to turn that on first. So I'm going to take my saturation and turn it up, and I usually go to about 30, 30 to 40, just depends on where I stop. And what this is doing is now it's applying the hue of zero, which is a pink-red color, but at this volume, it's, it's a pink. So if I turn it all the way up, there you'll see. Look at the special effect. Isn't it beautiful? No. Uh, so again, about 30. And then let's just, that's enough of a volume to see without being a, too much, uh, in my opinion, uh, what the color is doing. So I'm going to walk through the colors. And you go from red to orange to yellow to green to blue to purple and then reds and then back to pink. So what I want to do with this photo, what I was thinking is this feel, this is an old, this is an old building. So I want it to feel like a photo that has been sitting in a photo album that was taken. So the photo was taken in the 1970s, 60s or 70s, so 50 some years ago. And it's been sitting in a photo album ever since. And if you've ever seen a photo that's from that era sitting in a photo book, they age and they change colors a little bit. And the way they change colors is the bright parts of the photos go a little golden yellow and the dark parts, the shadows, go a little pink, magenta. So that's what the look I'm gonna go for. So I've got my saturation turned up in the highlights and I said I want it to go kind of golden in here and that's right around in this tones. It's somewhere in the low 50s. If you go much above 60, you start getting into greens and that's not what I want. I wanna keep it in the golds and yellows. So I'm at 42 for my hue. My saturation is at 36. So you can see the, the roof is more, um, uh, got more gold in it. 
the whites on the trim also has more gold. The clouds have a little more gold. So let's turn it up a lot so you can really see it. So uh, that's more than I want to do, but that's kind of the idea I want to get to. So I'm going to turn the volume up to a little bit higher than I normally do. We'll go to about 55, which is the saturation, by the way. So we're going to do the same thing on the shadows. The shadows I want to do here is, like I said, I want a little bit of pink in the shadow. So let's turn the saturation, the volume of the shadows color change saturation up. So I'm going to turn it up to about 40, 30, 40. And you can see it's already kind of got some pink in there, but let's walk through, because that's what zero hue is, is pink. Uh, let's walk through the different colors. There's some golds and some greens and blues and purples and reds and pinks. And there we go. Okay. So Actually, the hue I want is not very far off from this uh, starting zero value. It's right around 15. Uh, I like that look. And I might turn it up just a little bit more to get a little more of that effect. So color-wise, this is the look I want. Back uh, when Instagram first came out, they had a, one of their first filters was called 1970s, I think. And it kind of looked like this. If it was a one tap and you got this kind of look on your photos. So there we go. Now, I want to complete this and kind of sell it as an old photo. So all those things I did in the basic panel, which I usually do with my um, uh, digital photos, um, don't really work very well with an old film photo because they're, they're not as sharp, they're not as contrasty, and the camera quality was not as good 50, 60 years ago. So I'm going to undo some of the stuff I did up here, especially in the presence section. So I'm going to start there and I'm going to just undo everything. So what I'm going to do is just click on, double click on the word presence and that'll reset everything in that panel back to zero. So already that looks more like, I grew up in the 70s so I know what these look like. I have a bunch of photo albums. This is what it looks like, more like this. So the texture is reduced and actually this dehaze, I'm going to make it negative. I don't usually do that. I don't do, do that, well, that's too much, but you know, normally I'm up here, but I'm gonna go this way to kind of sell that this is an old, old photo. So my dehaze is a little negative. I'm gonna leave vibrance and saturation alone. Um, I'm gonna leave this alone, the highlight shadows, whites and blacks, and now turn my contrast down from what was about 4, 30, I think, to about 17. So now this really feels like an old photo. Uh, it feels like a photo that's been sitting around a long, long time, um, or at least it feels more like it. It's, and that's part of storytelling. If you want it to feel nostalgic, this feels a little more nostalgic. It doesn't feel like a digital photo that was taken yesterday. Maybe all these clues and cues visually are, are helping you feel like this is an old photo. So we have lots of things we can do with, uh, with photos from the basic panel through HSL color, and then now we've added this layer of split toning. And split toning, again, are, is color stuff, and we have connection to color. So let's do one photo, another photo, this one. We're gonna combine all of these together. So we're gonna do some basic panel edits quick, and we'll do some HSL, and then we'll uh, do some split toning. So here's the starting point is again diagnostics. I'm gonna look at this photo and say, what's what's where's the defects? What do I want to fix? What do I want to then also do for emotion for feeling? So let's start with the defects. Like the train station, this photo is too bright in the sky and a little well, mostly in the sky. So I'm gonna start with highlights and whites. So highlights minus 100, whites pull those down. So that's that's better. But it's not enough yet. You notice how this isn't as dramatic as it was on that train depot. So I'm going to skip down to HSL. And I have more brightness controls in here in the luminance. So I'm going to take the blue slider and go to the left, make it darker. And now I'm bringing out more detail in the sky. Um, obviously, there's lots of blue in this photo. Additionally, uh, in the the uh, the painting on the bridge, so but that's okay. Uh, it actually accentuates it, helps it get a little contrast. 
the water you would think is blue, but this is the Thames River and it's a lot of brown. So there's a little blue in here, mostly reflection from the sky. So already, wow, that's a big difference. So I just with three controls, highlights, whites, and the blue luminance. That's where we started. Already it's lots better, lots better. So let's go and fix some of those other things that I wanna do uh, technically, and then we'll get into a little bit more mood stuff with color. So um, I'm gonna turn up contrast because I usually do on buildings like this, go to about plus 20. I'm gonna add some texture, about 30. Uh, clarity, let's see, what do I want to do with that? I want to be a little careful with this. You can see now it looks like the city needs a cleaning. <laughs> I don't want to turn it up too much. Maybe just a nudge to about plus 10, just so it's a, a hint of it. Dehaze, uh, what do you think is going to happen? You're going to see more of the river and the stuff in the clouds. So watch this. There's the clouds. There's the river. Again, it's way too much. But that's the direction I want to nudge it to. So I'll, I'll turn it up a little bit about plus, plus 10, plus 17, something like that. So we've added some stuff. Um, do I need to do anything with the crop? I'm looking to see if it's a little crooked. I think it might be a little crooked. Also over here, uh, I've got this little uh, red dot that I, I, it's very close to the edge. So I'm going to crop now and just get rid of that. So I'm going to start at the top right, just click and pull down. There we go. My bridge deck is now in the middle, uh, is in the lower third. So, hey, and the one tower's on the right third. Hey, it's kind of like magic. Um, so, ooh, let's see if the bridge is straight. Yeah, it looks like it's pretty straight and flat there. Um, I'm going to overall increase the exposure just a little bit uh, so it doesn't feel so dark and sad. I'm at about plus 0.5 there. Uh, I'll turn up vibrance just a little bit because I like to do that. I'll go about 25. I'll pull the saturation down just a little bit, minus 10. Okay. So now I want to go into HSL and play around a little bit with the hue. And this is something I've been starting doing lately. And that's taking, um, I, I take most of the colors except for yellow, I mean green, and I make them a little negative and it just shifts the colors a little bit. Uh, there's not a lot of reds and orange in here, but what I do is I go here, minus, and this is a me thing. This is a look I've started to like. Um, and so it's about minus 13 to 15 on everything except the green and I leave the purple and magenta alone. So what that does is it just shifts the blues a little to teal and it shifts the reds and orange and yellows a little to the more vibrant -y colors, I guess. So um, here, let me, okay. Another thing I wanna show you while we're here is each of these panels have a little switch. So like I can do before and after on the whole photo with the, uh, uh, it's called the pipe symbol. It's the vertical, well, it's the backslash key. Um, but, so that's before and after. You can just show before and after on one panel. Uh, in the HSL panel, it's a little switch to the left. So I'm going to click that to just turn that off. Uh, because I did the sky, there's quite a big difference there. Let me, I've got to leave it for now. But uh, you can see a little bit of the color shift as well, I hope. will help. Um, uh, split toning. Uh, again, this, um, this is, uh, I'm going to do this a little bit for my style of photos. It's, it's a terrible word. I don't really like the word style when you talk about photos because uh, it implies trendy and it's going to change and you're just doing it because other cool people are doing it. Um, I do it. I have a look I like. Some colors I like. Uh, in case you haven't figured out, I, I like blue. Uh, <laughs> uh, my logo's got blue in it. Um, I have blue pens. So I like blue. So I do that in, in my colors. I like a little less pink in my images. So let me show you how I do that with split toning. Here's my thing I almost always do with split toning. On the highlights, I take my, oops, I sorry. I start with the hue and I just gonna turn it up. I always go, always go to about 54 on the hue. And then I turn my saturation up till it looks good. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna make it a little less gray. It's gonna warm it up. 
gonna warm it up. So it's gonna warming feels a little friendly. Those warmer tones. Uh, it takes a um, and again, it, I I just like the look. Uh, shadows. My magic number for you is two zero six two hundred and six. There was some trial and error to get here. Uh, and if I hit 207 like I did here, I'd go close enough. And then I turn the volume up. So this is on the shadow, so the darker parts of the image. So this is going to be the water and the sky. And I usually don't turn it up very much, somewhere between 19 and, well, somewhere between 15 and 30 is kind of the amount I go with. So it's not a huge change. It's pretty subtle, but here's the difference. I'm going to turn off split toning so you can see this is with split toning without split toning. Now it feels really pink to me. It's got a lot of pink in it. Now it feels warmer and uh, also the blue, the cool. So both warm and cool. It's kind of like me. <laughs> so that's how I would edit this photo. I'm correcting some things that are technically wrong that are, are bothersome to me. So it's way too bright, way too bright in the sky. So I can just quickly fix that with H with the the highlights and sh I mean highlights and whites, and then pull the blues down uh, in the luminance panel. Okay, how did I know that? Well, I've been using this for a long time. Um, <laughs> so, um, and then I added, uh, I shifted the colors just a little bit to my taste in the hue part of HSL, and then also to my taste split toning. I went that direction of colors that I, I like in the highlights and shadows. So now this photo is more me. If any, if we all had the same photo and I just, if I had you all edit this photo, I would hope you would all edit it differently, especially the way these kind of personal choices about color. Um, color is very personal. Um, and when you add those personal touches to your photo, they become more you, and then they become quickly identifiable as your photo as other people see them. So, plus they just, hopefully they look more like you. That's the biggest reason to do it. So uh, when you edit your photos, I hope you edit them as your photos. You're not editing for me, for someone else. Uh, just like when you took the photo, I hope you took it, that you created the photo that you created because it's what you wanted to do. Start there. If you start there as yours, you're interested in it, you enjoy it, it's exciting to you. And same thing with your edits. Play around, try different things. You can't hurt the photo. You can't break the photo. Uh, you can always go back to start over again. So that's some things you can do with HSL color and uh, split toning on your photos. So uh, there you go. There'll be some questions to answer about this on the assignment. Uh, now that you've watched the video, go read the questions and maybe watch the video quickly again. Uh, if you have any questions uh, on something that didn't make sense or uh, didn't cover quickly enough, I mean, quickly enough, uh, adequately enough, please let me know. Send me an email. Uh, stop by Zoom office hours. Some of you are starting to do that, and it's we're having great conversations. So that's fun. Um, the next video will be quickly, a, a brief, relatively brief video about noise reduction in Lightroom. I will see you there. I hope you're having fun uh, creating images and creating them uh, to be even more yours inside of Lightroom. See you in the next video.